in this video, we are going to sip on a little cup of joe here, chop it up and break down my $100,000 stock market portfolio. I'm going to be revealing the exact positions I hold, how much money is in each one, and then I'll give a quick explanation of why I believe in the company or investment. I personally really like these types of videos and I love reading comments under stock market type videos where people reveal their positions. So I figured this would be a really cool idea. So let's just dive straight into it. Okay, so my portfolio is broken down throughout a few different brokerages. So I'll explain why I have the amount I have in certain ones and the story behind them is starting with my first legal brokerage that I opened an account with when I turned 18. And I say legal because I did dabble with some pretty sketchy cryptocurrency investments in high school. But this first account that I have is with, you guessed it, Robinhood, Robin baby. Hood. So that's where I started my stock market investing. And once I had like a significant amount there, I stopped using it and opened an account somewhere else, which I'll talk about in a second. But I stopped using Robinhood because they're a fairly new company, not the best customer support there. They've recently had outages that lasted like two days. So I wouldn't want to trust them with any more money than I have there right now. Especially when there's brokerages out there that have been around for 50 years and have offices 20 minutes away from me, as well as all throughout the country. Although I will say, in my opinion, no investing app really beats the simplicity and design of Robinhood. Maybe Weeble, that also has a pretty good layout, but Robinhood is just such a simple to use app. But that's enough about that. Let's get into these positions. First up on here is my 30 shares of Tesla. This is a company I've believed in for a while now. I started investing into them as soon as I turned 18 and legally could. As you can see from my history, I started buying literally a few days after my 18th birthday in February 2019. So my average cost is at $317. When I think about Tesla, everyone loves their cars. The public perception is great. There's not a lot of electric car companies out there that come anywhere near Tesla and the infrastructure they have in place with having their chargers all over the country. Elon Musk is a person that people believe in. Very innovative fella. <laughs> Thank you very much. When I think of transportation in the future, it's hard to not think of Tesla. It's $600 currently though, I think it's a tiny bit overvalued. Don't even get me started when it was at 900, but I think if it gets closer to four to 500, I might start buying some more. Next up in this brokerage, I have 22 shares of Facebook with an average cost of $187 per share. Now, some people might see Facebook ending the same way MySpace did, but I just don't really see it that way for a few reasons. First of all, they own the two largest social media networks in the world, 2.45 billion people people actively use Facebook every month and 1 billion use Instagram every single month. Well, there's only 7.5 billion people in the world. So for a company to have a product that so many people use and spend so much time on is just insane. And here's the thing, a lot of these tech startups out there and whatnot, they're not making any money. They're just blowing through it and investors are okay with that because they see potential and I get that, but Facebook makes an insane amount of money. They have billions on billions on billions in their accounts. So even if a new social media platform comes around, well, first of all, Facebook can either just buy them out or with what they did to Snapchat, they can implement the features of those apps into their own the way they did with stories, which are now used by 500 million users every day. Facebook is such a powerful company that it's kind of mind boggling to think about. They were hit pretty hard in the recent crash, which I think is most likely not been over yet. So at 170 per share, I might be scooping some more up if it goes down. The only real downside here is that the CEO has been confirmed to be a lizard person. Uh, I, I, am, I am not a lizard, um, but you know, keep the high quality comments coming in. <laughs> I'm sorry, Zuck, please do not ban my Facebook ad accounts. But next up, we got my ETF positions. For those who are not familiar with what ETFs even are, they're just like portfolios of companies and investments put into one stock and traded on the market. So they're considered as fairly safe investments. They're usually not gonna have insane spikes or insane drops, which is good for a long-term type of investment. So I'm rocking with the S&P 500 at an average cost of 293. This ETF is filled with some of the largest US companies. Then I have the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF at $151 average cost. So this is basically the whole market put into one stock, which still has risk, but it's kind of a safer play. Then we have a few QQQ power shares, which are kind of like ETFs, but more exaggerated. So when you win, you may win more. And when you lose, you lose more, basically a little more risky version of an ETF. And the final stock in this portfolio is my three shares of Amazon with an average cost of 1,789. I don't know if I even need to explain this one. Mr. Bezos sure does know how to run an e-commerce business. I always get comments that I'm gonna knock over this coffee 
coffee cup someday, but looks like the books went first. But seriously, you can't beat the kind of product selection Amazon has. With those kind of shipping times, I recently had to contact their customer support and it was such a seamless experience. They have their whole Whole Foods acquisition play there to get into the grocery game. So they took department stores down and now they're going for grocery stores. With this whole quarantine going on right now, more and more people are gonna start ordering groceries online. And once this is all over, I think a lot of people are gonna be used to that and will continue doing so. And I believe Amazon will be one of, if not the biggest player in the game. It's just a monster of a company. And with all these different moves they're making, I don't think they're gonna peak anytime soon, but that's it for my Robinhood portfolio. So I started this portfolio in February, 2019. So that's a little over a year ago. And despite this big crash that we're having, which again, I think will continue. But for right now, I'm actually up on this portfolio, mostly due to Tesla though. I'll scroll through it here. And as you can see at its peak, it was at $60,000. It's currently at 49,000. For the year, we have 32% gains on here. Even with this crash, that's kind of crazy. But again, mostly due to Tesla. Now let's move on to my next account. And by the way, I think I mentioned Webull earlier, but if you're not aware, they have a ridiculous sign on bonus promotion going on where they'll give you two free stocks when you invest your first hundred dollars with them. These free stocks are worth between 12 to $1,400 and it actually works. I've gotten the free stocks. People have gotten Apple before. Honestly, it's free real estate. I have my referral link in the description below if you haven't signed up for it yet. Check it out, secure that free come up if you'd like to. My next account is with TD Ameritrade, which I started during the crash that we're in right now. And I have about 30 bands, 30 big boys in here. Now this account is not as structured as my last since I'm kind of doing a lot of plays here where I open very small positions in certain companies because they're dropping right now. And I think they'll bounce back once life gets back to normal. So that's why you'll see a lot of small positions here. I'm just opening them up to kind of keep an eye on them before I go in with money I have on the sidelines. These smaller positions are almost like a watch list for me. But first, let's get the positions that I already went over out of the way. I have 30 more shares of Spine here at a 268 average, 55 shares of ETI at an average of $130, and then 20 more shares of Facebook at 164, and the rest are new positions. So first up, we got Boeing. I had to do it to them. Only two big airplane companies in the world, them and Airbus. I think either can be a good play. So I'm in Boeing right now. Might get into Airbus because both just had insane crashes. And I'm not talking just stock crashes when it comes to Boeing. Nice. Was that a little too far? I don't know, we'll keep it in. Then we have Alibaba. My reasoning behind this one is similar to that of Amazon. Everything is moving towards e-commerce and Alibaba is at the forefront of that for a lot of Asian countries. So I kind of see this as an Amazon outside of the US and I want to diversify my portfolio so that I'm not just investing into US based companies. So I will likely be growing this position in the near future. Up next is Costco and Lowe's. Two very different companies, but my reasoning behind the two is fairly similar. With everything going online, I think these two companies actually stand a chance since people love Costco great prices and atmosphere, and they also have a subscription business model as you have to be a paid member to shop there. Although buying groceries is an industry that could eventually move online, so I'm not too crazy about investing into Costco, even though I personally really like the company. I'm just kind of seeing where it goes. Again, for some of the companies on this list, I put a little bit of money into them just so I would be more motivated to track them. But Lowe's, I'm more optimistic about. I think it may survive because it's a hardware store. You need a bolt or a screw. You don't want to wait two days for Amazon to deliver it. You need a bunch of two by fours. I, I don't know if you want to order that online either. I mean, I'm also kind of torn on this one because people said that no one would order clothes online and yet here we are, but I think home improvement materials are different than that. So I think either Lowe's or Home Depot could be a decent investment just to have a little brick and mortar action going in the portfolio. Not a lot though. I'm running out of transitional phrases here. So I'm going to hit you with a furthermore, we have Delta, which is an airline company obviously took a huge hit recently. I think there's a very high probability of it bouncing back once this current situation that we have going on is over as air travel is a necessity to a lot of people. No, I'm not Googling synonyms for the word next. But following that, we have Disney. I think their Disney Plus service is gonna continue being a huge success. It's a massive company, took a big hit. I don't only really see it going away anytime soon. It's very different from other companies I'm investing into. So I'm starting to open up a small position here while it's on discount. In, in addition, we then have Starbucks. Although I'm personally not the biggest fan of the company, a lot of people are. I may continue buying it during this dip since it might be a good idea to invest into companies right now that will be the first to bounce back once this whole pandemic situation is over and people are back to their everyday lives, driving to work, stopping by to get their morning cup of coffee, maybe at Starbucks. But I'm kind of wary on this play as well, just because if this situation that we're in continues getting even more serious, then people might not have the money after this is all over 
over to be buying $5 coffees at Starbucks. So I don't know, I'm definitely gonna proceed with caution on this one. What is more, we have stock ticker SPHD. This is an ETF that pays really good dividends, so I'm trying to dip my toes in the dividend space with that one. By the same token, we have Square. This is a payment processing company. Lots of good things have been going the way lately that I don't think have been really reflected in the stock price. Every coffee shop or not super corporate food place I go to, I see them using this payment processing system. So I'm just trying to scoop some up while it's on sale. In other respects, we finally have AT&T. This is a company that's taking a solid hit during this crash, but people need their phone service. So I think this is one of the companies that's gonna be very quick to bounce back once this is all over. And it's also a good dividend stock, which I'm trying to get more of. So this is one I will probably continue buying. That's it for my TD Ameritrade portfolio. Now, before you comment that there's too many companies I'm investing in here, I realize that, but as you guys saw, I have a bunch of small positions that I got into due to the crash. I'm not gonna be going in heavy into all of those. Actually let me know in the comments which of the stocks in this portfolio I should get into heavier and I also kind of want to get into some renewable energy companies so let me know which ones to look into wow what a cool angle switch but the next investment account i have is with merrill and it's a sep ira which i did for tax finessing purposes this is a retirement account that business owners can fund for themselves and for their employees so all of this money is a tax deduction for my business and i'm gonna have to pay the taxes on it when i take this money out at my retirement age it's not a self-directed account though so i only choose the level of risk i'm comfortable with and merrill chooses the investments based on that so there's no point in really getting into the details since i'm not the one choosing them which brings us to my last last account slash investment. This one's going to be a little controversial. I understand it's not the stock market, but it's closer to that than it is to real estate. So I figured I would include it in this video and that is be connected. Now, but I really do have a little Bitcoin as well as some Ether. At this point, this might be a complete gamble, but I think sometime in the future, it's almost inevitable that we change the way our currencies work and that might not be as far away as it seems. Think about it. Do you use physical cash more or do you just swipe your card? Most people don't want to carry a large amount of cash around. So in a way, money has already gone digital. And with all this inflation going on, Bitcoin it kind of really makes sense. I'm not buying Bitcoin in hopes that it gets to a million and I can sell it. I'm buying it thinking that eventually it might not even make sense to sell it for a fiat currency like the US dollar. But that's my whole stock market related investment portfolio. I do most of my investing with real estate, but with this recent crash that we're in, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity here. So I've been paying much closer attention to the markets and I am looking at expanding this portfolio. So let me know what you guys think of this as well as what you're investing in that you think might be a good buy in this current climate. But most importantly, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Peace.